Hello and welcome. This is Gilman. I am joined by... I am known as Squall Snake, the editor-in-chief of MyGamer.com, and today we are playing something special. I've I have been waiting for Lydian Chronicles for five years, probably, at this point. <laughs> it's been delayed a few times. Uh, a few is an understatement. Um, <laughs> they tried to use COVID as an excuse. That stops working after two years. Um so one of the really cool things about this game that i'm going to point out right away is so uh right towards the top oh, let's zoom in and see right here is like a gate to another mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. and in most games you'd be like oh that's going to stop me from going over there and progress you go right in and cross over the other area if you want to so you can kind of go wherever yeah, you, you want whenever you, you want yeah so if i i have, I'm not super far in this game, but um, I'm, I'm far enough, and I've explored a bunch of places. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really impressed. If you like Sakoden games, this is Sakoden. It's it plays more like it. There are Sakoden titles, Sikoden, as I believe the correct pronunciation, mm -hmm. but fuck that. Mm -hmm. um, that feel less like coden than this game does like they have a tactics game they have a the one on the ds that had nothing oh, to do right. with the series mm -hmm. it was literally konami being like oh let's see if we can do something with this title um it, it that one it's it's fine it's a fine rpg but it's not a coden game yeah, my experience with this series is limited, um, but I know that people really like the Sakodan series, and we know Konami doesn't really like to make games anymore, so there's no chance of actually... So to have like this you know, spiritual sequel, yeah. and at the same time, I, I appreciate that, you know, this art style of it, like it's not this square hd 2d that has that weird blur that i hate so much like that fisheye lens blur like just give me the whole thing like i want to look into the background and see stuff so i really like this art style a lot the kind of like the 2d sprites on a 3d yeah, but it's sprites but it, are done really well. it, that's exactly what i was just going to say like it's done the right way you know it's not just like these lower res sprites that like really don't look right so if you've played sakoden <laughs> Yeah, this, how's this battle system work? It's Sakoden. It's the mm -hmm. same as two. So, like, does everybody attack at once? Uh, there is a turn order, but it's pretty close to being all at once. So, like, you have the combo attacks, same fucking thing as in Sakoden. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and it, it zooms in dramatically and all of that yeah. shit. It's that. That's it's. This is Sakoden. <laughs> I know I keep many... saying that, but it, it's really when someone says something's going to be a spiritual successor, uh, even like uh, Castlevania when they did. What the fuck was that? Lords of Shadow? No. Um, the, the 2D one that was kickstarted. They did a spiritual successor and it played. It, it's, it's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... Bloodstained. Bloodstained, yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so you just walk to the other area. It's like, okay, we're just there now. Um, so Bloodstained, it, it, you could tell it was inspired by Castlevania, but it didn't play a, like a super lot like Castlevania. Um, you know, there, like, you could tell there were differences in it. Um, So do you get a bunch of people in your party, like a bunch of like NPCs that you can recruit? Is that like the gimmick? I know I've that already was like the recruited big two NPCs. So the guy uh, on the top left in like pink, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I recruited, and the magical girl on the bottom right, I recruited. Um, Who's the wolf dog guy? He, he's just part of the game. Okay. And so part of their Kickstarter thing that they did deliver on was they were going to do a prequel to this mm -hmm. um, that was a side-scrolling 2D action game 
I actually played all of that. <laughs> um, what? When was that? That came out. Nope. Nope. A couple years ago. Hmm. I'm gonna say probably 2001, and it was supposed to be like, it, it was a full game, but it was supposed to be this fun bonus prequel thing for people who supported the mm -hmm. Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm sorry, my cat just jumped in my face. Well, I mean, speaking because speaking of Bloodstain, they did the same thing. They made they're like, we're gonna make this big console game, but then they also made the this the eight bit uh, indie creates uh, like like a original Castlevania, which were fantastic. Those games, I yeah. mean, think those 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 little smaller games are better than the big game. To be honest with you, Didn't they those are exceeding. Those are too. very very well done yeah so there's bloodstained uh there was two bloodstained you know eight bit kind of like yeah. the d makes if you will um like the again like those pre-order kind of special one. bonuses yeah. and then the big one yeah and like there were i mean all the all the, all, all the games were great but the i really really like the eight bit yeah those are like i, really I thought well they done. had announced they were doing another big one maybe uh or maybe that was another kickstarter thing that's still going i don't know no no it was so like the second one of this one probably won't be a kickstarter um they it, they so the artist on this i believe it was the artist uh passed away directly before this game came out oh yeah that was that's that was a bummer because he's done the art on like every single sakoden game mm -hmm. um but the prequel game that came out, uh, it's funny because so the magical girl was also in that game. It's the same sprites. And like there are some oh. enemies that are the same enemies. And it's like, well, of course, it's OK to reuse the same assets. It's the same world. It's the same world. It's the same characters. Sure. Why yeah. not? Yeah, save a little bit of the development time, if anything. Yeah. So it was like, OK, so they were just that that one that came out. They, it was just something they figured they could do with the assets they had okay that prequel game was that another rpg was that like a we're it's gonna make a this a side scrolling it was a 2d metroidvania rpg so it was uh, uh yeah it, it it was like a it, metroidvania with levels mm -hmm. and okay so was, not not a typical turn-based battle rpg uh no no it, it was very much an action uh mm -hmm. game Okay, yeah, I'm just kind of glad, glad to see like these, you know, these these older RPGs kind of like coming back a little bit. You know, Square guys doing it like with the HD 2D stuff. Here we have this, you know, Suikoden, however you want to say it, Suikoden. You know, whatever happened, whatever happened to like um, uh, uh, Breath of Fire? Like that's the other RPG that like has just been long gone. So, um. Sakoden was so beloved that it got one game after its train wreck game because Sakoden was always you got in, from what I remember for the most part no. um, a here, word of mouth what? game like yeah. the first one it, came out mm -hmm. and if you knew someone who had it they recommended it to you because it was like really good face, no. um, yep. when the second one came out same thing third one same thing Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like, and there are people who are constantly just discovering it, especially on the PS2 with the third one. Right. That one, a lot of people really loved. I didn't like it as much because it's totally very, very different from two, one and two. Um, and then four came out. Everyone fucking hated four. Uh, and they got one more game, five and five played exactly like one and two. But they, like, never really did anything after that. Um, a lot of games release their shit game, and they don't get another chance. But they yeah. got one more, and it was sort of over. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ain't looking good, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, look at, like, uh, like uh, Fire Emblem's another good example. Like, there's been a bunch of Fire Emblem games, and they're like, all right, we're going to make Fire Emblem Awakening, and if this doesn't sell... We're never going to make another Fire Emblem game. And sure enough, it sold well. And now look at every Fire Emblems all over the place, even like Dynasty Warriors clones and stuff. Yeah. So like that one game was the make or break game. Uh, and, Breath luckily, of, and Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. So that was five. 
No oh, one. Oh yeah. yeah. I I yeah. actually really like that game. The building for that. Um, and I think if it know. released now, Something. people would As like it a lot goes, more because of. Probably. It, it, it's not uncommon to get a difficult game. Plus, I think you got to remember too. Back in like that yep. PS2 era, even like that certain PS1 era, like so many games were coming out, like, and they were all different and unique. Like now, if you get a game to come out, it's going to be like, all right, it's just this year's Call of Duty, this year's Assassin's Creed, this year's Madden. Like it's just like rehash. Whereas like this stuff was kind of this was new, and we got a bunch of this stuff back in the day, and like the landscape was like. Let's just release a. There's just like a lot of games coming out. They're not established IPs. It was a, like we kind of we, we didn't realize it at the time, but we were kind of spoiled. Like there was like all this crazy stuff. Like Katamari Damashi came out. Like that never. And it's like, funny it's because start people somewhere. I, that the PS2 was when I first remember developers bitching that it was getting expensive to make games. Yes. Oh, and now yeah, now it's just out of control. Well, so. And in all honesty, I think that the PS2. PS1, PS2, but mainly PS2 mm -hmm. was the mm -hmm. era that it the technology was advanced enough to make really good, pretty close like modern games. Like the state, like you could play a lot of those games, and they've it, they play like you know you'd expect them to back in the day. You know, it's nothing super surprising about it or anything. Um, okay, this is the bar. Um, it, you know, it was advanced enough to give you to do what you wanted it to, but not advanced enough that it was costing like, I think they said The Last of Us 2 costs like uh, 200 million or something. That's really why you, you get all these studios closing because they're putting all their eggs in one basket trying to make these ridiculously big triple A games. And it's, we don't see a lot of big releases these days. Like I remember, you know, again in the in the late PS1 era, the PS2 era, there was games coming out all the time. It's like, oh, did you play this? Did you see this? Like, oh, look at that. That's different. You know, like Devil May Cry started there. Like, if people were talking about, it. here's this crazy new IP, and like when Resident Evil was new, and like you said, like, oh, you play Su Suikoden. Like, oh, play this weird RPG that I got. Like, we don't really. I feel like we don't. Have, there's none of that today. You know, like there's these. I we've been covering on my gamer the small games that everybody overlooks the big sites overlook the the very few magazines are left overlook these these smaller games but these these smaller games are like where i have the most fun because they're not these triple a games that are rehashes of something that's already been done a million times but it's just developers just trying to play it safe because that's the only thing that they can get away with because if you can't sell you well, can't and a lot of that stuff is like diminishing returns is that you can keep yeah. throwing money at stuff and it'll it will keep getting better but it's you know it, you it hits sell a so many copies. well and it hits yeah. a plateau that you're like yeah we could throw another 10 million dollars at this game but is it going to get 10 million dollars better is it going to get 10 million dollars back you know probably not so like yeah so i mean that's it's just a weird you know the last here in of us too, supposedly did not turn a profit maybe i mean i think they're turning maybe maybe now with the tv series is going to be a season two because it's funny because right now because the fallout show just came out on amazon and all the like fallout 4 sold like 400 times the amount that it sold oh. in like the last couple years like because it's like you get this other thing to tie in with that and so it just sells all the previous games so like when the last of us 2 season 2 the the this the tv series comes out they will get just more sales of the previous games just inevitably through that because people get excited about it but yeah it, it comes to a point where you're not going to see games like this that we're playing here are we going to ever see a you know a breath of fire again <laughs> you know like i don't know maybe not or if it is it's going to be like some shitty mobile game or something like that that nobody cares about because that's like where they think the money is um i i just wanted to check how long we were going um yeah yeah no it, this game did not cost a hundred million dollars if <laughs> no i no. mean it probably cost a couple million or something but the cool thing about that is 
they probably got that back with the Game Pass deal with Microsoft from Microsoft. I, I was that was I was just gonna say that myself. And they've they've had this on the Game Pass, you know, coming soon watch list forever months and months it's been that and first they, they like also tile still have the other game the prequel game on it so if you're interested at all in that i would recommend it it is entirely a different type of game but it's actually pretty good and it's the, still the same world is it still called an Aludin chronicles i because i didn't even know about I that i think that one's that other... rising is what it's Aludin chronicles rising oh god okay. yeah i'm gonna have to check that out there because i didn't know anything about it so i have i've had limited experience with, with suikoden like i said but i've always just heard good things it's like kind of shame on me for not playing it i totally should play so I've, I've always heard like one and two are like the best in the series um one and two, it, it depends on who you fucking ask. If three was their fi their first game, I've heard a lot of people say three. Mm -hmm. Like they, they played three and then went back and played one and two, and they're like, one and two were really good. Two mm -hmm. is sub is one of the best RPGs ever made. Um, I would say five is probably better than one, but one was also a launch title for the PS1. Right. Yep. Really expecting um, oh, it's, it, I'd be curious to see if they ever... Well, you know what? Did it? Now that you mention it, didn't they say that there was going to be like a one and two compilation HD? And that's also been delayed to high. Yeah, yeah. I kind of remember that. Way. That That's a thing Konami actually promised that like a long time. That might have been like two years ago now. Oh, yeah. yeah it's on my wish list in Steam. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever happened to that? Because that, that, see, that'd be the time to play it. That that Because I'm sure if they HDify, yeah, sure, it'll look better, but they're going to add the quality of life features. Kind of like what they did when they remade the. Uh, the the Final Fantasy remasters like you could click in the one analog stick you played at like ten speed you click the other analog stick you get invincibility so you don't have to like grind the battles that you don't want to grind like those little things yeah yeah that's gonna be interesting to see whenever that comes out all right sir so how do you feel about this game yeah I I have it downloaded because uh, uh, it just became available on Game Pass so I haven't had a chance to play it yet I want to give it a shot myself so yeah if you have Game Pass definitely check it out i think these are the kind of games that we should be supporting so we don't just get the new maddens and the new assassin's creeds like let's try to support something a little different or something a little new so we can get more of this kind of stuff in the future and that that's not a square hd 2d game so and this is yeah. the best game i've played all year so far there you go. See, so, I'm only three hours into it, so my opinion could change. But <laughs> yeah, high praise. So yeah, give it. You know, I wonder how long this game is. Is this going to be a, a 40 hour game? Is this a 200 hour RPG? I'm I don't know. I'm probably going to say it's between 40 and 60. Sure. Okay, that could be. So that could be somewhat digestible for some players. And and again, if it's on Game Pass, you got nothing to lose. So give it a. Game Pass will occasionally. I'm pulling up Game Pass here. Have a thing on the PC that says. That it they tie it to the how long to beat. How okay. long to beat? It yeah. hasn't been out long enough. Sure. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and how long to beat probably hasn't been updated yet because it's still, it's only been out not even like a week or whatever. No, it, it came out yesterday. Yeah, there you go. So yeah. yeah, give it a give it a week or two, and then we'll get that information. But yeah, probably a you know a few dozen hours. Yeah, would, I'm gonna say it's be, probably a say typical that. JRPG yeah. length. Yeah. So yeah, give it a shot on Game Pass. You got nothing to lose. Check us out at mygamer.com. We are posting all the reviews on games that nobody else is covering, these small games that we mentioned before. And then you can follow me on Twitter at Zach Gaz, C-A-C-K-G-A-Z. And until next time, thank you for watching and game on.